What's going on, YouTube? As you can see here with my Cosmo robot I just got about three days ago, I'm having a great time. But unfortunately for me, I found out he has some defects. I did buy him used off of eBay, and when you put him to sleep, he kind of gets weird. Cosmo is this fantastic little robot that has a huge personality. And I guess I got some added features because when I do put him to sleep, he goes into zombie mode. The white lights on his back indicate I don't know what. Only one tread starts to spin at full speed, and thankfully for me, he doesn't make any freaky noises, but his face is also off too. I have no idea what's going on. I decided to start with the cube first. I figured it was the easiest of both pieces that come in the kit. One screw, a few clips, and the circuit board pops out, but first, you gotta cut these little tabs off that they welded on. Not really a big deal. I really like how Cosmo is doing hot laps while I do this. Then, as we see, the board that does come out has four red, green, blue LEDs surrounded by other LEDs, and the big chip in there with the 8-9 on it, that's the control chip. Let's wipe that chip off with some alcohol and find out what it really is. It appears to be an NRF 31512C. That is the entire control and Wi-Fi that these cubes use to talk to Cosmo. Now it's time we deal with Cosmo. He refuses to give up even though his battery doesn't have much life left in it. I raise the arm up and down a few times to see the Wi-Fi hotspot. I wiggle the head back and forth so that you can see the options that Cosmo has to offer. If you wiggle his head again, you actually get to see some options that are available if you use the wheels to move the menu up and down and select these things. Unfortunately for me, I can't move the wheels because he's moving them all by himself. So this menu is kind of useless. I decided to start by removing the treads just because I didn't want Cosmo to run off the bench and realized that trying to take that screw out of the wheel that was still spinning was going to be really difficult. So I started with the other side. I took the clips out with a flathead screwdriver and then it reveals a Phillips head screw to take that wheel off. And after taking the wheel off, it was really kind of cool to see that the wheel is got the gear embedded in the wheel itself and driven by a small DC motor. Uh, this also reveals another screw behind that wheel and helps that front bumper come off. So I'm going to hold off on that wheel that's still spinning for the moment and try to work on the head. Uh, there are two clips on either side of the head. The red rings there have two clips on them. After you pluck that off of there, there's two more Phillips head screws that can be removed for the head. You don't have to take off both sides, but you do have to take the windshield off of the head in order for the head to fall apart. And that will open up and reveal the screen and camera assembly. So taking the windshield off there, you get to start to see some electronics and it allows for the head to be split. Now, I did not start by taking the arms off, but realized afterwards that if I took the arms completely off first, this would have been much easier. Uh, it opens up the top half of the robot there to get the head off. So I had to hold the wheel for just a second. It's still spinning, driving me nuts. Decided to take it off with a Phillips head screw. It comes off, then the wheel comes off. Now the motor is just spinning, and this lets you take the front bumper off. Uh, the right side of the robot there also reveals the one screw in the front that holds the entire chassis together. And so you do have to take the back wheel off on this side only to get the other screw out of the back of the chassis in order to split the robot in half. So after removing that last screw on the back half of the chassis there, I'm trying to pull the robot apart. And by doing this now, I'm trying to take off the arms, realize that that bottom arm is really on there. Don't want to pry too hard to take this off. Uh, the head does decide to come off now with a spring that's holding it in, so don't lose the spring or the location of that. Helps keep the friction on the gear that's built right into the head for him. But this does expose the connector for the entire head assembly, which is a three-pin uh, connector. can take it off with a pair of tweezers, or you could do it with the flathead screwdriver. This would remove the camera, the screen, and the speaker for Cosmo. I had to do it with the power on. I had no choice. I had no way to put him to sleep or take it off. I hope it doesn't damage it, but we'll put it back together and see after we're done with this if everything does come together. I do notice a couple of chips on there, and we'll go over that later after we get the rest of Cosmo apart, but it does seem to include the speaker, the camera, and the screen. So checking those two screws in the chassis that don't want to come all the way out, there is a third one revealed after removing the head that is the actual last screw to split the robot in half, but we do have to get the arms and the shield behind his head out. So I do take the red cover plate behind Cosmo's head off and then go for the arms afterwards. Realizing that the arms are attached still, trying to pry it gently apart, notice the back does come off. It exposes a lot of connectors there to the main board and covers the uh, connections for the LED so that back plate won't come completely off. It does have wires attached. I noticed the clip that you can remove with a flathead screwdriver for the top arm. Again, the bottom arm is still really tight on there and I did not want to remove it, so I decided to take the arms off at the lift and split it that way, which is kind of awkward, but still worked. 
So back to the Phillips head screwdriver for the screws for the front arm on the lift. And we'll just split Cosmo this way by using the one arm. I'm amazed it didn't lose screws sooner, but that screw that I did shoot off of Cosmo there, I ended up finding it on the concrete floor, putting it on the bench. Took a lot of prying to get this lift from arm mechanism apart. Uh, I was worried to take it apart at the robot, so I decided to just pop it off at the lift. But after prying every angle I could find, it was really scary not to break it. I thought I broke it at one point, but I didn't. They really built this part well. Uh, I, I would assume it's because it picks up cubes all the time and therefore gets a lot of stress on it. After that does come apart, the robot comes apart nicely, splits right in half. There are some counterbalance weights in there for when he does his wheelie tricks. There's some big connectors there to all the motors. And now you have a robot that's in two whole pieces. Being that I have an electronics background, I did decide to focus a lot on the main board for this robot and realize that the only way to reset zombie mode on this Cosmo is to possibly disconnect the battery. So I fire up the soldering iron and I'm going to desolder one of the wires on the battery to remove power completely from the main board. And while I'm in there, I realize that the main control chip is right under there. So we're gonna take everything off, clean some of this up with some isopropyl alcohol and see what the actual part numbers to these chips are. And the only way to get in there and see the entire board is to remove that charging interface. So the soldering iron we're going to be using for the battery and the charging interface here. This is really small electronics. Luckily I have a microscope, so we're going to use all of that. So we have Cosmo completely taken apart down to the main board level. Let's take a look at what's on there. There's a really nice layout here with all of the amplifiers uh, and motor controllers for Cosmo itself. And as you can see there, that's the NI51822 chipset. That's the controller. There's the headers for the main board to go to the rest of the motors, the drivetrain, and the front LED headlight that is on Cosmo. The camera screen and speaker are all powered by an ESP8266 chipset, which is really cool because there are a lot of Arduino-like projects that utilize that chip. I don't think they're using Wi-Fi in the head though, but it's possible. I did not see any antennas. As you can see, we're gonna solder battery back on. We're gonna put the base plate charging interface back on, and then in the exact reverse order from which we took it apart, Cosmo is gonna go back together. I do encourage all of you to leave your comments below. If there's anything that you would like to know about Cosmo's insides, we can take the rest apart. I do plan on removing Cosmo again, or dismantling him again, and actually trying to hijack the software off of Cosmo and copy his chipset. But as you may know from playing with him, the iPad app is doing most of the heavy lifting as far as the augmented intelligence goes, not necessarily the robot himself doing the thinking because as soon as you disconnect him from an iPad or a Android device, the Cosmo robot himself doesn't do a whole lot. So thanks for watching. Again, comments below. Don't forget to subscribe. And if there's anything else you'd love to see taken apart, we'd love to take it apart. We probably already have one here on the shelf. And uh, enjoy some of our other videos. Thanks for watching. Have a great day. What just happened?